Welcome, everybody, to your moment of peace and tranquility. It's families. Woo! <laughs> families, episode five is sponsored by Credit Karma, Stamps, Policy Genius, and Raycon. Ryan Kavanaugh, take these. You are not getting a dime of any of those sponsors. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, you know, before we get too much into it, we have a fantastic, by the way. Such a great show today. I'm excited. Such a great show. A Teddy Fresh Care Bears collab is coming out this Thursday at teddyfresh.com. Yes, I put my Teddy Fresh on too. This is just a little preview. My mom is wearing a tank. Show show the back. Looking good. Yeah, I mean, work it. Show it off. <laughs> You're working it for sure. This is the all over one of our one of our you know hoodies. Um, I'll show you our Instagram. Should I stand up. Yes, work it, girl. Come on, mom. <laughs> show it off. Stand it up. <laughs> And what, what's your age again? What? Don't ask him. I'm about uh, 65. Why are you acting like we haven't talked about it before? I don't need to be reminded. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to just oh, okay. say, look how good she looks. Okay. She's 65. Oh, thank and you. And yes, she did just get a haircut for those observant fans out there. Jesus. Okay, my mom has been... She's like, we need to shout out the barber. We need to shout out the barber. Not Don't a barber. forget. He's a hairstylist. At he, Gian Sassoon on Wilshire Boulevard. Thank you very much. This is like the, old, the biggest old lady flex in the world is Sassoon. I don't know what that means. I still don't. Well, that, wait, that's, what is Sassoon? It's the name of the salon. It, Vidal Sassoon. You've never heard of Vidal Sassoon? Only from you. It's like, okay. I mean, All who right. cares? He cuts hair. Big deal. Well, actually, he's not alive anymore, but he's, he, he, yeah, there's a really good backstory about him, but. Oh, he did. Okay. We like. Okay. British. Cut hair. Yeah. And cut hair. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, anyways, I love Um, the haircut. Thank you. Vidal. Etienne. So anyway, uh, Teddy Fresh, uh, uh, teddyfresh.com, Teddy Fresh on Instagram. Here's some previews going, got going on here just to show it off a little bit. Boom. Uh, this is the hoodie I'm wearing right now. And then here it is. Very in, cute. Oh, wait, this is a different piece. This is the piece in white. Really beautiful, too. More, more Not light, but light. We got a watch coming out. Oh, that's oh. cute. Yeah, yeah. You know, I need a watch. The watch that you gave me doesn't work. You want a Care Bears watch? I'll hook you up. Yeah? You know I got uh, your back. Okay. I'll, Here it I is. Could, Look at that. It's I sick. I could use a watch. Look at this. I could. The oh, arm, that's so cute. The, the Care Bear arm moves with the uh, hour. Oh, wow. Yeah, come on. That's cute. Get with it. Thank you. Teddyfresh.com this Thursday at 10 a.m. You have an Omega Ladies Constellation watch that's worth a lot of money. I think maybe we could just get that one fixed. I've tried to get that thing fixed three times, and they can't get it fixed. Just needs a battery, I think. No, you need a Bel- Bedell Sassoon of uh, watch work. <laughs> I've I've changed the battery twice. Okay. Okay. Well, so mom's changed the battery twice. Dad, you're doubting there should be a way to get this watch fixed. Your retort. Yes, there should. Yes, there is. Mom, what do you think? I've Your response. Br- I've, I've brought it into the jeweler a number of times, and it worked for about a week, and then it stopped working. Dad, your response on the watch you drama. didn't take it back to that jeweler. Didn't take it back. I did. That- Mom oh, did take it back. Oh, no, your you response. Didn't. I Yes, I did. No, oh, you didn't. We have a conflict here. We have reported. <laughs> we have reality. We have <laughs> okay, at this point, uh, we, have, we have a conf- conflict of reality. We'll have it fixed. By the next podcast. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Mom and Dad, for the watch updates. We'll be looking <laughs> forward to that next week. Okay. We have a fantastic show, first of all. You, the drama that my parents are going to be explaining today, you want to just in- give it a short intro for the people. This is regarding... Go ahead. James Charles. Is that the one and only. Okay. <laughs> He was recently canceled again yesterday on Twitter, and my mom is going to explain. Okay. Wait, not right now. Oh, okay. Just teasing it. (laughs) Because there is some stuff I want to get to first. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Dan. Uh, And then then we're going to talk about, uh, oh, this is really fun. I have a porn quiz for you guys. A porn quiz? Oh, Dad will you, get an A. I don't know. These are really tough questions. And there's a lot of them. It's really interesting. Uh, so I'm really excited. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, this, here, let me tell you your your bonus slang word for the day, for the $100 okay. bonus. Okay. I and, remember the word yeets. 
You know, you don't. Yeah. Forget no. that. No. That's not making you any No, you're today. still saying it wrong. No, I'm not. I looked it up when we went. Okay, I got say it home. again. It's Yeats. It's spelled, it's a hard E. Yeats. Spell it's it? A, it's jargon. Don't, and it hold means on, to to propel something, like if you're throwing something away. Like, can you spell like it for me, please? you drink your soda pop, you yeet it into the trash can. <laughs> Can you spell it, it's please? It's Y E E T S. There's no S. It's not a yeet. Oh, I have a habit of putting S's it's on It's just things. you yeet it. Yeet. Yeet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. But that's not your word today. Oh. In the spirit of uh, James Charles, as we'll be talking about him, your bonus word today is spooked magooked. Spooked magooked. Spook okay. magooked. And it means to be, you know, scared. Okay. Spook magooked. Spooked. That makes sense. No, but spook magooped. Why the magoot? That's just the way James Charles put it together. Okay. So give me a spook magooked. Uh, the child was afraid to go. She was afraid of James Charles she coming. She was afraid of James. Yeah, the young boy was afraid of James, of James Charles. Yeah, but you have to use the word. Too young. Okay. <laughs> um, the little girl. Boy. Was, the little boy was afraid to go to sleep that there were monsters. He was spooked magoot. That there were monsters underneath the James bed. James Charles under the bed. Okay. James Charles was under Spook his McGook. bed. Very good. Spook McGook. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So now we have some beef to settle, Dad, that I saw you over the weekend. And there was the first thing you said to me was, everybody thinks I'm short. Ah. Uh. And people were calling you a short king, which, you know, is a, de- is a term of endearment, oh, obviously. Yeah, very endearing. No, they mean you're a short king. I mean, you're, listen, you you are a short king. I never considered myself short. It may be delusional, but, I mean, I was close to 5'9 in high school and college. Gravity has ground me down a little bit, I think. So I am a tiny bit shorter, but I am not 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, I'm so, five, five. so if you if you look at the TikTok, people, anyway, people were commenting that my dad, and I agree, mm, you do look yeah, a little you, shorter in this. shrunk, I it's think. the camera angle, too. Where- but I don't know. I'm thinking, here, well, let's watch this back. This was obviously the, the infamous dance that everybody Oh, my loved. God. Look at how horrible we are. We, we danced. Shredder was, this, it was the standout performance for me. <laughs> he kept on looking <laughs> from dad to me. He's so back funny. And forth. That was so but funny. But you do look like a short king here, dad, with peace and love. So do we have a tape measure, Dan? I think your pants were just too big. All right. So, so dad, let's just settle this. Let's get out the tape measure. Take off your shoes. Come on over. Let's get everyone here. And let's just put this to rest because, you know, it's time It's time in your life that we confront this issue and stop lying about our height. Okay, well, let, let's do it with the <laughs> shoes on. No, <laughs> that's cheating. You know. They say, they say, Dad, if you say you're 5'9", I think that means you're 5'7". No, I'm not 5'9 now. I'm 5'7". Probably. You think so? Okay, let's, let's do a test. And also, let's check Chuck's mom, because your, your problem was that you think people thought that you're the same height as mom, right? No, I, Dad's definitely taller than I am. No, that's what it looked like. No? But if oh, I, I've mm-hmm. got my shoes on. And, 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 and okay, just... Well, come, both, so come, come did, here. did you guys notice my dad's shirt, by the way? The team skeet. We come in peace. So my dad is putting the merch to good use here. And not paid either. Not a sponsor yeah, post. I was requested to wear this. <laughs> Well, I'm there. saying if Team Ski, they should, they should be paying you. All right. You're in contact with them, right? No, just once. I have not heard back from them. Much of my disappointment. No, I'll put them in touch. I will negotiate a deal for you to wear that shirt. I'm giving them a taste. Okay. All right. Sounds fair. Okay. F- 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 shoot off. Shoes off. Come on. Well, I can just stand at the height. <laughs> take the, take the, the shoes off. Oh, damn. These are some thick-ass boots, too. Yeah, what if? That's odd that I wore those today. <laughs> okay, so mom, do you want to take your shoes off and stand next to dad? Yeah, take your shoes off. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> take your shoes off, woman. Dad is right. not joking around. No shoes next to him. And obviously the vapor boy hat. What is it with this hat? Anytime somebody, anytime, like when you turn 60, they just hand these hats out. <laughs> My dad recently Wait, started we wearing one. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. How old's your dad, Dan? 
Uh, he is actually 70. Okay, so 60, 70, that's yeah. when you get the hat. Well, that's true. You're, you're well, 70, yeah, 70, and I think it's at 70 you get the hat. I've sure. seen my good friends Leo and Brad yeah, wait, wearing you these. You the hat when you... What? What Dad, you... give me a break. He's trying to I'm cheat. Eating. Are you serious? What? What? I didn't even know. Don't put your that. knee. Don't put your right. ankle. Just stand up straight. You need a hand, Dan? I think I got it. Here. Okay, stand up straight, Dad. All right. <laughs> oh, look at he's going on. Take the head. hat off. Take he's the hat on off. His I think my hair will be taller than the hat. Let's see the hat. Take the hat off. We've got to see where the dome ends. Stand up straight. Fix my hair. Your hair looks fine. I have my hair stylist with me. All right, okay. let's see. Dan, okay. here we go. Measure yeah, to the top the of the hair. Is. <laughs> no. No, put your. There you Should go. Nailed nail this here. Yeah. Okay. We have got. Five foot six inches. Oh, I think your tape's wrong. Okay, you must measure try. her. Okay, you can measure me. Okay. Wait, here now. And we've got. Let me get it accurate. Yep, yeah, right there. That looks good. Okay, okay. Mom. and we are looking at five foot four inches. So that makes sense, right? Ah. So You're I shrunk too. too. <laughs> So you're a short king. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not five five. And Wait, what did we say? Five, five seven. Not able to get that far away from we did you measure him at five five, Dan, or was it five six? Five six. Five, okay, five, five six. Oh, five six. Five six. So five five. Wow. Is, oh, but that's what people said. They were close. They said five five. Five six. <laughs> he said no. They weren't close. He's well, tall enough for me. I of love course, him. there's nothing. He's a short king. I love him. But like I said, I I've never considered myself short. Yeah, because conf. It's all in the state of mind. Although, confidence. He's got a big personality. Yes, so you're six feet tall. Everyone thought he was mentally taller. In fact, <laughs> yeah. Plus they, I, you know, they thought I guess from sitting and my fantastic erect posture, you know, <laughs> thinking that I'm some big giant muscular guy, and I so I think maybe the you shock, do stand tall. You're you're like a short king with good. With big stature, like Tom Cruise. Right. Do you and, like and, that? And, See, that's the short king. Well, yeah. I guess when Sean got taller than me, I should have figured out <coughs> I had diminished a little bit. Well, in, let's in not that. let's not forget that I was considered like a freaking giant in our family. Yeah, you are the I tallest to, one. I had to fight all the odds by being <laughs> maybe 5'11". Five, five, I Sorry. thought you were six feet. No, give me a break. In your well, dream, no? I'm not. Please. I you were. Mom's side is all short, but on my side, on the leaner side, my cousins, Greg and Doug, are tall. They're so over six feet. So let we. I come from a, a family of shorties. Let's be honest. Not the leaner side. You guys are all short, and I'm the tallest at five eleven. My my family was pretty tiny. My dad was only like five six. My mom is your was, family the one with the tiny dicks. Because that's what I, I'm that's just kidding. inappropriate I'm just question. Kidding. Well, somebody gave it to me. I'm just kidding. 100% kidding. Sorry. And it has to come from mom's side. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, so that was fun. How, do you feel any different now that you've wait, you know you're 5'6 officially? Do you accept that? I'm going to bring my own tape measure next week to check. <laughs> Your okay. tape? He's still going to be saying he's yeah. We five can do seven. a way. We can do another hey hide in. Maybe do it in centimeters this time. Sure, it sounds a lot higher. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people were requesting from Dad. We have two stories I want to touch on here. One story famous told famously told about you, Dad, was when we went to Dodger Stadium and people would throw the beach balls uh, around and then you would grab them and stab them with a knife no yes he did do that he didn't stab people he, he stabbed not people <laughs> what do you mean now you think it's a bloodbath at dodger How stadium dare you throw that beach ball <laughs> of course he's not stabbing he, people he he did he took out his 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 pocket knife yeah and i was screaming at him like what happens if you stab somebody no, he grabbed it held it in his hand and fucking stabbed it no, now he what was, is he wrong was, with you he was like doing that. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he, he was. I was too. there. Back in the good old days. Oh my God. Could... So my dad is stabbing yeah. wildly into the audience. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is fucking crazy. Back in the crazy. good old days when you could bring deadly weapons into a stadium with you before they started all this silly bag checking. No, it was just a little Swiss army knife. And, you know. You could have hurt game, someone. I want to watch the baseball. Yeah, game. but there's other people. You're not the only, you're not the main character. Right. But 
if you've ever seen, you know, innocent beach ball. Yeah, great. Innocent beach ball. Till someone smacks it and oh, spikes please. it oh, into your face. But better that they it, get a knife. No, no one's getting <laughs> a knife. The beach ball is getting Dad, it. I've been to plenty of games. Nobody's spiking balls it's into people's fun. faces. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, that's, it's that's a whole happens. It's people, a whole thing. Okay, so you're the beach ball police. And I hate the wave. Oh. So I just but, but that. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm there at the game Thank with my dad. We'll get to the wave. Oh. I'm at the baseball game with my dad with the whole family and it's so fucking humiliating you don't understand how bad it feels when your dad is the one and everybody's booing everybody's booing you nobody's no. happy that you did this for yep. catching the ball no no people are booing you for stabbing the ball you're a fucking narc dude that's what the people who work at Dodger Stadium do it's their job well sometimes people that act in the good of the community as a whole are ostracized. You really so. overestimating your people liked it. It's an event. Yeah, people it's, it's, like it's the beach whole, ball. It's a whole thing. It's the game. It's the peanuts. It's the beach ball. Okay. Just well, watch it home if you don't want to deal with the beach balls. Oh your well, dad's seventy three million people voted for Trump too, so what? You really <laughs> a lot of a lot of dummies I'm, in this I don't country. know how you That's turned it into I'm, Trump. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But like Basically, this is traumatic, and I'm looking for an apology. Well, you know, we're going I to didn't a game stand tomorrow up night. Moving the knife around like it was in a knife fight, I just calmly sat there with it in my lap. I don't care about the knife. You, ball. you, you, you're getting my whole family booed. I'm not. I'm too young for that. I can't be getting well, booed. Well, he can't. He can't game. do it anymore because you're not allowed to. Well, I'm not there. He can do whatever he wants. But I'm traumatized by you popping beach balls at the Dodger game. Well, I'm sorry that your trauma level is so low. How's that for an apology? <laughs> I don't, that's not a good apology. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is like, people do the wave. People have fun at ball games. Everybody's, do literally everybody. I'm not kidding. Everybody in the stadium is doing the wave. But somehow in my dad's <laughs> mind, no, we're doing the right, we're doing the right thing for the greater good. No, everybody's doing the wave. And me as a kid, I'm, ex my dad wouldn't let any of us do it. I'm expected to sit there <laughs> and look fucking angry about it. And it's so awkward too, because you want to, as a kid, you want to participate in that kind of thing. But I'm sitting there like such a sap. It's not fun. It's traumatic. The wave was a dead meme. This is like back therapy. When you were a kid. You know, I go there to watch the ball game. Then stay at home if you want to focus on the ball game. No, I go to the game to watch the okay, game. Okay, but you're not the main character. There's other people enjoying themselves oh, at the ball game. Listen, he's just, just let dad be The dad. wave has nothing to do with the ball game. All it does is distract people from watching the game. Big rally going on. Oh, let's do the wave. No one's watching the game. Just my well, you could watch the game and yeah, let them do their thing. That's all. Ugh. There oh, are well, other people that hate the wave. Okay, so you're part of the gatekeeping wave haters anonymous. That's okay, right. so you're part of the true, you see yourself as a true fan of baseball. He's hardcore. I see it. standing up for the truth. You used to bring binoculars to the game. What kind of weird shit was that? Why, if your seats are far, see, binoculars help you see. You, you could that. see fine. Well, now with this. My dad's sitting there with binoculars. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'm just trying to describe how embarrassing it is going to a baseball game. We used to go to them all the time. My dad's sitting there with binoculars. Like, what? Wait, and I'm listening to the radio, game on oh, the radio. Oh, yeah, he had the also. game on My dad's it got the game radio. on the radio. He's holding binoculars. He's forcing my mom to take take score with oh, a plate. No, I enjoyed no that. I used to enjoy that. keeping <sighs> It's just too much, dude. It's too much for kids. We've traumatized, traumatized our poor son. Well, that's why I only have two season tickets this year. So, oh, mom suggested, well, why don't you ask Ethan to go? And I said, he has no interest in going. Not after all that. He's still traumatized. <laughs> I am still the traumatized. The one game he went to. Yeah, you wonder why I'm not into sports. <laughs> it's it's just traumatic for me. Uh, I do remember, too, someone was smoking in the bleachers once, which is uh, weird. That's inappropriate. And then my dad goes, <laughs> and he fucking goes on down the hunt like a damn, like a, like yeah. a hunt dog. <laughs> Looking yeah. for, and I looking, yelled at the person because yeah. that was like maybe one year after they banned smoking in right. outdoor places. Yeah, and it was some woman cup, you know, hiding it. Oh, no one can see it. Smoke's coming up. So I just in that leaned case, over you're right. Politely went, you're not supposed to smoke in here. And <laughs> she, she put got it the out. message. Yeah, and, uh, and people clap. For no, that. listen exactly. That's how you know the people clap. 
when you when you ruin the beach ball, people boo. They're giving you signals of what <laughs> is good and what is bad. You have to listen to the signals. Claps, I understand. Booing, I'm not sure the significance of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, and then my dad also got us killed once at a Star Wars premiere. I got us killed. You know that Almost. was oh at a Star Wars premiere. Our Star Wars, yeah, you guys, you know it was what I'm the talking about. Opening of the first Star Wars. That, that was my fault. It and Wait, it was your fault. It, what happened? Digitized it. Whatever. Well, we went to <laughs> see the the Star Wars movie. It was yeah. at the Bruin in West, and we Big were at. Premiere. We were at the theater. Yeah. At at Bruin, and there were in front of us were a bunch of young. Uh, students. Yeah. And one of them got up to go get popcorn for the rest of them. Yeah. And these two big football guys said, are those seats taken? And they said, yes. This and is he like goes, well, five nobody... minutes before the movie is going to start. Okay. Yeah. And he says, well, you're not allowed to save seats because we weren't allowed to, we're not saving seats. These belong to someone who just got up to the, go to the concession stand. Mm -hmm. And they went and they sat in the seat anyway. And here's these young little students and these big football players. So I tapped him on the shoulder mm -hmm. and I said, those kids are right. They're not saving the seat. It belongs to someone who went to the concession stand. You're in their seat. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and he said to dad and I, I'll see you after the movie. And your father was so, <laughs> like, he was oh. so terrified. I was terrified. <laughs> we had, he had <laughs> mace. He had mace. And w as soon as the movie was over, we went out through the side door. And I mean, you couldn't even no, the enjoy the movie. Came back, the ushers came down. Yeah. And they kicked the guys out. And as they were leaving, they turned to me and say, we'll see you after the movie. Yeah, yeah. that's so what I'm happened. I'm not terrified. I'm prepared. Okay. <laughs> so as the movie I was ended. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was scared. I was a young kid. We were yeah. going out like the back. My dad's got mace. I was like, what the fuck is well, going yeah. on here? Yeah. I couldn't even I enjoy even know the movie. On. I thought. With five minutes to go. Yeah. I said, okay, here's the plan. I, and I went to UCLA, so I know that area. I know where the car was. See the emergency exit back there? As soon as the movie's over, we're heading back for that exit, straight to the car, had the mace in my hand. If the guys came up to me, I was just going to... I had the, I had the, the, had the mace in my purse. And and you, you're and both armed? I had the mace in my purse, and Dad said, give me the mace in, that you have. But you were mad at me because I tapped the guy on the shoulder to support those Every young students. Every guy that had a girlfriend has done that, rolling down the window, yeah, fuck you, buddy. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, pull over. And you get the crap kicked out of you. you I didn't. I we didn't. love women like that. I was just supporting those young students. She was right. She yeah, was no, doing I, the right I, thing. I, I you know, my big mouth too, but they did <laughs> not catch us, fortunately, although... Oh. They will, that, now, they that would have been a whole nother trauma, watching my dad get his ass beat. They might still be looking <laughs> for me. Oh, man. Craziness. So, yeah, my dad has almost got his ass beat in my presence many times. But you've evaded all efforts to, be, to fight you. See, Remember the time when we were in the car and that guy brandished a gun? That was scary. Getting off track here. That was... Before it was uh, popular to brandish firearms. Was I in the car? Yes, you were. Oh, my dad has almost killed me in the car so many times. I mean, you really tried to kill me as that a kid. That wasn't his fault. Well, he cut somebody <laughs> off by mistake. What did it was say, if you don't succeed, try, try again? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, oh my goodness. Like, I God. cutting people off in the beat. Dude, the first time my, my Ela hung out with my dad. Oh, I remember she that. She thought he was the biggest psychopath. And dad, with peace and love, you remember this, right? Well, she just didn't, she was terrified Me of his driving. Were we well, in Mexico? No. <clears throat> yeah. We were in Mexico yeah. where my parents lived at the time. My dad is like a pretty big SUV and he's hitting corners so fucking hard. <laughs> the wheels are coming up and the car is like bouncing around. <laughs> and we're all so terrified that even Ela, who just met you and who is a relatively shy person in, in personal relationships like that and someone who she doesn't know, she says, Gary, slow down. Even my, we're all screaming at you, slow down. And then- Ela, who doesn't even know you, goes slow down and you won't. Why don't you respond? You just, you don't respond. I think it's the uh, roads in Mexico, not my driving. Stop. You were hitting those turns at like 80. No, there's no way. Dude, you were driving too fast. We all knew it. Never got a ticket. You've gotten speeding tickets before. Not in Mexico. Well. Anyway. Tangent. That's a whole, there's a whole saga of my dad trying to kill me. <laughs> and then the time, he would take the whole family in the car. My dad is like this UCLA alumni obsessed 
And we've talked about that. And so he sees a guy on the road with a license plate that says USC, which is their sports oh. rival. Okay. It's just a college that's, sports rival. But that's it's all not, in fun. It's not all in fun. Listen to this story. It's a license plate that says USC. My dad's license plate says hates SC. That's his license plate. He goes and fucking speeds up next to this guy and cuts him off. You with did? The whole family I don't the remember car. that. Like that's hate. Like he hates this person. I don't not remember true. that. I, that I, those were old license plates, by the way. I don't remember that. Yeah, I was that. a kid. Oh, I remember that vividly. My BMW. Okay, flex. I st actually still have those plates in the garage, the UCLA alumni plates. Beat SC and hates SD. I, do we still have a hates SC? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, what I'm saying. He does hate. Do you hate SC? No. Be honest, Dad. Ah. Uh, I have an intense dislike. <laughs> Do you see this? <laughs> this hates man is 70 years old and still hates a college. That's how I was raised, born and raised. I was raised correctly to hate it's Trojans. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Enough yes, about this. Let's, let's do yeah. that. Enough beating up your poor Cut dad. Cut that whole thing out, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I, li I mean, I find it fascinating. Fascinating. And then my... Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then... Um, you had an interesting story I wanted to share too, Mom. You got in a beef with a bunch of old ladies that you were, you were meeting up with, like old high school friends. <gasps> what not to do in social interaction? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. It was pretty uh -huh. funny. It was my fault. Mm -hmm. It's all my fault. That's a good start. So my mom start. Well, do you want to tell the story or should I? Oh my God! If my friends see this, they're going to be so pissed. Well, you're on it. Pamela's going to see it. Oh, I just got on my high horse and started, you know, why do you guys all have straws? We were, we were all drinking, you know, our beverages and all the girls had straws. And I started ragging on him about having straws. And then one of my- What did you say to them? That we shouldn't use straws. And what did they say? Well, my girlfriend, Debbie, who is like one of my best friends, she had just bought like 600 straws and had it sent to the house. And I just, I went ballistic. And then, and then, um, one of our friends, my mom uh, puts her foot down at straw. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. One of, one of our friends is, uh, uh, she's an attorney and, and, uh, very sweet girl. It, this was so my fault. I just started in with um, the whole vaccination deal, and she is vaccinated. But well, she, hold on, tell them what you said to them. Oh, I can't believe we're talking about this. It's so funny. Oh, Let Ethan. this be a lesson to you. Oh God, I'm not going to share anything with you. That's the lesson. Come on. <laughs> that, oh, what? We don't have to. We can cut it if you want. Oh Lord. Let's go. Let's go. My my turn to be roasted. Everything huh? is Fire to the if feet. If you guys want this show to work, everything's calm. I yeah yeah yeah. Mind yeah. me being humiliated. Yeah. Well, I just <laughs> I mean I just went off on on you know everyone should be vaccinated and I made I, I was wrong. I thought that that the government should uh, have some sort of. Um, mandate that everyone need I mean if you go into a restaurant you have to show your card that yeah. shows that you're vaccinated it's private mm -hmm. but I I kind of went a step further <laughs> further and said you know maybe the government should just put their foot down and say look at you know just like during polio or mm -hmm. you know you have to wear a bicycle helmet or you have to put a seatbelt on it's yeah. a law my mom says the government needs to make a law that you have to get vaccinated to live. <laughs> Compulsory vaccination. You have but to come into your house. What's They're vaccinating uh, you. No. You can't leave your house. No, no. I, but I was wrong because- That's what they do in China, pretty I much. Shouldn't, sure. Yeah, well, this is in China and I was wrong. So I apologize to my friends, even though I really think everyone should be vaccinated. I agree fully. So right, but that's different from now. All my girlfriends are going to be so mad at me, forcing you to do. Well, that. anyway, turn it to my mom's now play. Turn to like this big drama where everybody, where there's well, like a big argument. No, no, my no. mom's like, it, everyone needs to get vaccinated. And she <laughs> didn't know any needs. of these women or hadn't seen. I any hadn't of them seen for some of these years women in and years, years. Just complete strangers. Like, why are all you well, bitches using straws? I didn't <laughs> say that. That's a good way to make good. Well, friends. that was the Gary. icebreaker. Oh, that's true. That was the icebreaker. You come right out the <laughs> right. gate with what the fuck is all these straws? <laughs> Oh, God. It's awesome. All right. Okay. 
enough of all that. Thank you. Let's let's go to a break. A short commercial break. Thank you to our sponsors. Shout out Ryan Kavanaugh, who's not getting a dime. <laughs> and when we come back, we have a bunch of photos of my parents, of me, that we're going to go over. And then we're going to get on to porn quizzes and summarizing James Charles drama. So much great stuff to get to. Stay tuned. Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, and now they want to help you even more. With Credit Karma Money Spend Account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. Credit Karma is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. Fan-fucking-tastic. When you use your credit card money debit card, you can win daily Instant Karma purchase re- reimbursement. That is such a mouthful, dude. Try to say that. <laughs> credit Karma money debit card. This is the part that gets me. You can win daily Instant Karma reimburse- purchase reimbursements. On items of up to $5,000, let's go. Just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. For me, I like this because not everyone can get a credit card for various reasons, and credit cards have lots of rewards where debit cards don't. So I think this is a great opportunity for people who can't get credit or don't want to get a credit card to get those spend rewards back, you know? I, I, this, it's hard for young people. It is it's hard out there, man. Yeah. Credit Karma Money has already given away over $3 million in instant karma to over 50,000 Credit Karma members and counting. Open your FDIC insured spend account for free. There's no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. And during July, up until July 23rd, July 1st to July 23rd, if you make a purchase, you'll be automatically entered to win $1 million. Wow. Let's freaking go. Credit Karma Money, progress starts here. And right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVP Banking Incorporated. Members FDIC. Maximum balance transfer limits apply. Wow. <laughs> You know I love Stamps.com, and I'm going to keep using Stamps.com, even though the world is going back to normal. We're going out to restaurants again. We got summer plans. Going to the post office? No. That's one thing we don't need to return to normal, because Stamps.com brings you all the pleasures of the post office right at your freaking home. Okay, mail and ship anytime from anywhere right from your computer. Send letters, packages, pay less, a lot less with discounted rates from USPS and UPS. Stamps.com saves businesses thousands of hours and tons of money every freaking year, dude. I mean, Stamps is fantastic. It's like you no. print it, you get the postage, you can have them pick it up. It's like a wham, bam, and you and it's cheaper than the post office. So much easier. It's fantastic. Brings you the, the uh, USPS. Uh, the U.S. Postal and UPS shipping services, they make it easy for small business to mail and ship without needing to take a trip to the post office. You can print U.S. postage and shipping labels 24-7 without having to leave your desk or buy any fancy equipment. All you need is your computer and a standard printer. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop off. It is really that simple. Stamps.com is an absolute no-brainer, saving Nearly 1 million small business owners like you, time and money. They offer deals you can't get anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. Come on. And with their switch and save feature, you can quickly compare carriers to find the best rates every time. That's a win. That's a win, win, win. Stop wasting time going to the post office and starts going to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code FAMILIES, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale with no long-term commitment or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in FAMILIES. That's Stamps.com, promo code FAMILIES. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Policy genius, are you ready for some fireworks? No, not the ones popping off outside your window until it's 2 a.m. We're talking about the fireworks you feel when you finally get life insurance coverage. Mm. You know, now's a good time to let, You want to get it when you're young. It's cheap. When you get old, that shit is pricey, boy. Or any type of insurance. That's the beauty of Policy Genius. Uh, Policy Genius makes it easy 
to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Why compare? This is the big deal. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare pol- policies. Uh, the licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. The kind of service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five star reviews across Trustpilot and Google, and eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week thanks to an award winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirement for a simple phone call. Whoa, that's pretty baller. Everyone needs insurance. Life insurance is a big deal, man. It is. You know, you want to take care of your loved ones when you're gone. You don't want to leave them with the whole mess. This exclusive policy was recently rated number one by Forbes, higher than options from Ladder, Ethos, and Bes- uh, Besto, okay. whoever they are, losers. <laughs> bestow, bestow nothing but grief on me when I use them. <laughs> I'm all policy genius or nothing. <gasps> to get started, it's so easy. Just head to policygenius.com slash families. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. Policy Genius never sells your information to other companies, and Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. So head on over to policygenius.com slash families to get started right now. That's Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Good advice. Earbuds, wireless Bluetooth earbuds are the game changer you need in your life. This summer, you're walking, you're exercising, you're out enjoying the beautiful warm weather. Earbuds, Bluetooth, it's the game changer you need. And my advice is take the Raycons with you wherever you're going. Okay? A pair of Raycon wireless earbuds is going to make all the difference and all the fun you're doing outside. This summer, you get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of other premium auto audio brands. And Raycons look great and feel even better. They come in a range of cool colors with customizable gel tips included for a comfortable ear in-ear fit, which is everything. My, I got weird ear holes, man. I do, too. It's really... Must have got it from you. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. But the ear, I mean, the Raycons got you covered for those weird ear holes. And Raycons are built to go wherever you go with quick and seamless Bluetooth pairing and compact charging case. Uh, Raycons 24 hour battery life is kind of epic, too. So you know that you're going to get that grind out of it, boy. Listen up. Raycons offering 50 15% off for all of their products for my listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it go to buyraycon.com slash families. There, You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. It's such a good deal. You're going to want to grab a pair for a spare, just in case. They're the best. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash families. Buyraycon.com slash families. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking around. Let's do these photos before we get into the segments here. Oh, I got to see these pictures. <laughs> so this is some photos that my parents grabbed to by share. By popular request. By popular request. 15 years old. 15. That's so crazy. You look different. You look like a different person. Do I? Your face looks totally different. Well, I've got baby fat. Yeah, you're 15, I guess. Does I mean, I was like only 15, 15 years girl. old. <laughs> that was a year before we met. Yep, and there's dad. Dad's fame. Dad, my uh, dad. You want to give the backstory on this photo? You seem pretty hyped on it. The black and white one with your buddies. Great photo. These are my uh, best childhood friends. There, uh, Fred Sweet and his brother Dan Sweet above him, and my friend Danny Birnbaum, who's in Vegas now. And, and what was then, the context? The context. Well, we were at Lake Piru, and I've discussed psychedelics previously, but <laughs> this was uh, actually the uh, the day with my first uh, trial with uh, psychedelics up at Lake Piru, rule number one, do it in a cool place. And with all my friends, it was an awesome experience. And then the blonde head behind us there, wasn't really there. It was uh, an apparition of no, a shared hallucination. No, she was actually there. Oh, okay. This was someone who <laughs> hung out with the Manson gang for a while. She wow. was uh, living with Charlie on the ranch, and this is... Was she a friend of yours? Is that why she was in the photo? She was a friend of Dan's girlfriend, I think. Was she, she pretty wild? 
she was real quiet and mm, the just quiet everyone one. kind of ignored her. But it was an interesting story. So this was, I think, after Manson had already been killed. I'm trying to, what year was Manson? Manson wasn't, wasn't killed? killed? Set, I'm sorry, Manson had been arrested and sent to prison. So oh, and she was, so she was hanging out with you guys after all that? Yeah. Oh, that's fucking well, wild. Well, it's a good thing she left and she yeah, wasn't a part of that. I would be that. hanging out with her. I'd be like, she left the ranch. She, well, maybe oh, she, she was smart she, enough so, to okay. leave. She seemed harmless. She yeah, left she didn't before. didn't do any of the killings. Yeah, yeah but she not, left before the killings happened? Correct. Okay, that's good. So uh, I'd be like, I'd be side-eyeing her doing acid with the, <laughs> someone like that. I'd be like, oh. But, anyway, your look is pretty on point. Very freaks and geeks. Look at those glasses. The black big ass, and white. Big black hair, and white man. Photo. And no big gray. Hair. He doesn't have any gray. Massive hair. That's like Hillary Clinton helmet hair, bro. How old were you, Gary? Look at that big neck. How? You keep talking about the big neck. Big neck. How he worked was out. I? <laughs> I know this that. Is... Before we met. So you had to be before. No, you... this isn't before 20? we met. 20? <coughs> this isn't before we met. <clears throat> okay, next one. I think so. Uh, That's our wedding. Uh, you look right beautiful, after our, Mom. Right after our wedding. Dad looks like a... Doesn't he look cute? He's like, damn, I don't know how I got away with this one. <laughs> St I'm still saying that. <gasps> I like that top, Mom. Pretty baller. Yeah, it okay. was the... Open button phase of uh, U.S. society. You can see my buttons are open. Oh my mom's goodness! I was 16 years old here. Wow! Look at you guys here. Dad's 21 and I'm 16. Dude, that if that happened today, bro, you would. Not oh, I know. In trouble. I know. Uh, 21 and though. 16. Well, you know what? I was more mature than he was. Look, well, I believe that. I actually do believe that. But look at her. I mean, she San looks Francisco. Like she just came off the cover of Dude, 21 and 16. Were you guys oh, were you guys having a, a, a none uh, of your business? <gasps> what? Let's fucking what? go. Did you guys, you know, Not feel till the deal? She was 18. Yeah. Not until she was 18. We were in love. Almost. Oh, you lie. That's so crazy. Yeah, you could not do that today. I mean, no. that would be just like, whoa there, yep. buddy. Yep. So we're in San Francisco. We went up there to visit my friend Dan, who was in that last picture. Who he was, was in dental school. Dental school up there at yeah. University of San Francisco. Any comment on the neck, Dad? I know you always like to talk <laughs> about the neck. Big neck. Well, that's, I was in weight training and weighed uh. probably... 25 pounds more than I weigh This now. one is That unrelated. was my brother's wedding. Yeah, that we Dad and I that. were just starting to date. You guys aren't even in this photo. No, that was just- that Why was am just, I looking at this? They're not even in this photo. Well, I, I, random family pictures? It, 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 well, it's just that I was- Well, you, you know, can see young. how mom powers over the rest of her family. She's not in this photo. Yes, I am. I'm at the end. She's next to her dad. That's me. Oh, that's, this is you? Yeah, that's me. Oh my me. God. Look I was really tan. I don't even recognize I was really tan. Look oh, how tall so mom, she is. Yeah, so mom towering over everyone else. <laughs> yeah, now wow. you know how tiny my family right. is. Wow. That's my grandfather, my father's father in the end that used to speak to me in Yiddish. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think I ever even see a photo of him. Yeah, Uncle, it's Grandpa Nathan. I always loved your, your folks were great. They were just the sweetest people. My dad, my, yeah. my mom, yeah. <clears throat> and that's me playing the guitar to your sister. Oh, wow. She was like six picture. and a half months old, I think. I was 20. That couch is such a timepiece, too. Like, such yep. a blast from the, and the carpet, yep. everything. Yeah, that was your grandparents' house. Dad looking like a big necked, big necked legend. Yeah, that's dad. Not, there's <laughs> Jessica. Wow, She's mom, you look great. Old. Look at you. I had I'm short like, hair. I had a haircut. Yeah. I had short hair and I, I put blonde highlights in it. Damn. I used to do all my hair myself. And how old was Jess in this photo? Oh, gosh. She was young. Two? Yeah, Two? probably. Yeah, she's about Theodore's maybe? age. Probably. Wow. And the next picture Look at that. Bad. There's Jessica if, if, again. If I had a prime, this is me in my prime here. <laughs> yeah, look you at, look handsome. Yeah, not a gray hair. So I'm how old is Jessica there? Maybe three. Four, three, three or no, four? I think she was like three. So this is, uh, and there you are. Wait, wait go scroll down. There's <laughs> my baby. There you the are. One, that's Ethan popping up from wait, the top show, of the basket. Yeah. There, the stroller. There. You're always so alert. I love that family picture. Look at that. Look at that face. That's crazy. That was like just a whole different world, lifetime. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah, I look swear. at my eyes. I remember. I went with, with my sister, I think, and smoked a joint before. My eyes are barely open Jesus. in this picture. Ugh, leave it to you. Okay. Look at that face. Great family picture. I oh. think that was your birthday. You might have been. One? 
Must no, you were me. you were sitting up. Was, so yeah, yeah, it might have been your definitely not too. Yeah, it could have been your first little year. Face. Look at you got food on your cheek. I look a lot like Theodore when you look at old oh, pictures boy. of me. Oh boy, you so look at look at that. You okay, look like this Theodore. one is freaking identical to Theodore. You see the blanket? I made that for you. Cute. Do you remember that blanket? No. Oh, you you <laughs> brought that around everywhere you went. It's my cousin <laughs> Kathy to the right. Oh, I love this picture. This is my brother and me, and I look so much like Theodore. Do you see it, Dan? Yeah. It's Where crazy. was that, Gary? Ridiculously so. Where were we? Theodore looks exactly that like That same him. grin, insane. too, like that same kind of smile he does. Gary, this where where were we? At the L.A. or San Diego Zoo. I think. Oh, that jacket that you had on. I, I had you, like, it was an Air Force jacket. You loved that jacket. Here's a little boy, Ethan. Look at Aww. you. Look at that face. Aww. Come look on. at those eyes. I think Theodore's going to look, I mean, it must have been like five maybe in this photo. I think Theodore's going to look a lot like that. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at you. That was your, you were. My college dorm. Yep. We were packing you. Uh, uh, such a dork. Such a skinny dork. Yep. That was getting ready. Oh, you look a little thinner there. But also just such a dork. Like, look at my posture and shit. <laughs> that was coming off my hardcore gaming days. <laughs> Oh, look at look my my bathing beauties, my my three men, Excuse Dad, me. you, and Sean with the glasses back this there. Is, uh, first Vallarta trip, I yep. think, infamous for Sean slicing his elbow. To now, look at how burnt you were in this picture, Gary. We were all <laughs> so drunk. Oh my God! This is at PP's restaurant in yes. Puerto Vallarta. Sean's looking like a boy band uh, member here. <laughs> yeah. Drinking age is 18 and they didn't ask for IDs and the margaritas were strong. So that was, that you was see how much taller college. I am though? It's crazy. I know. Yeah. That was your first day of uh, <laughs> Dad. college. Uh, yeah. I remember this moment. You guys dropped me off. It was pretty wild. Yeah. Was like, bye. That was hard. Yeah. I think I cried. I cried. I cried. Did you? I cried. This is me and my childhood dog, Spunky. Oh, Spunky. Remember when Spunky oh, spunk. bit your friend's butt? Cause I told us, was... damn, Porkchop was fat. And I remember, oh, what a uh, fucking hefty boy there. Po well, Porkchop. <laughs> <laughs> he was a chunky little fucker. He was I don't remember them being so chunky. And, yeah. And, he, he was and pretty Spunky fat. was pretty fat, too. Yeah, they were. Wow. They were. Anyway, this is me. This uh, is my dad. The bicycle Yada, yada, yada. yada. Me and my dad, up. my mom, my brother. Damn, I forgot Sean used to have a goatee. That was pretty gnarly. Yeah, he always had a goatee because he couldn't grow a mustache. So that was the... That looks like Vegas. That's the funny because I... Three of you, doesn't that's it? That's definitely Vegas. That's funny because I got the mustache and Sean got the goatee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Imagine that. Look at look at Dad's face. All right. He's so smashed. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. And that's that. There, now you've all seen it. Yep. <clears throat> All right, now from wholesome to absolutely uh, repulsive. <laughs> okay, before we get into the porn quiz, I feel like there's something I need to familiar. Dad, you should come over here for this because I'm going to show it to you. Do you know what hentai is? Henta? Hentai. Oh, hentai. Not like <clears throat> hent. Like H-E-N-T-A-I. Do you know what hentai is, Dad? What kind of form of animation? Dirty. Oh, wow. My dad knows what hentai is. That's amazing. Come on. I didn't just fall off the track. <laughs> okay. Well, here, I want to show, just, I feel like this is important going into the next quiz. Okay. To define hentai. Okay. So I'm not going to show this to the people. I'm just going to show this to you guys and you guys react here. You, should get, you can share the mic with mom. Okay. So just get here. Just get your, <gasps> this oh, is my. frozen Elsa, frozen Elsa. They're, oh my God. It's frozen Elsa hentai. Look at that. Look at the expression on her face, her eyes. I don't remember that scene in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. This is someone putting a straw up their phallic. Oh. A straw up the phallic, and oh, it's a chick. Lord. What's her pronouns? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. You figure it out. But there is a term for the one in hentai where the chicks have a dick, right, Dan? Do you know that one? Or Ian, do you know the name of that one? I don't. There's like a specific term for it. <laughs> chicks have a dick? Huh? So this is Oh, Ian says he doesn't know art? either. Oh, he does. yeah. yeah, this is hentai art. Right. Here is what's... Um, this is some cartoon, right, Dan? What is this one? I'm not... I'm mercifully not looking at this uh, album right now. Um, this is uh, you Rick and Morty. The Okay. No way. That's on. That's Rick and Morty. No. Yeah, this is from an episode of Rick and Morty where Mr. Meeses runs train on. Uh, 
No. Mr. Mises and all of his no. buddies run train on uh, April. He's not Jewish, I can see. <laughs> Good observation. Thoughts oh on this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Describe what you're seeing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Describe this for the people who can't see it. It looks like a woman. Here, into the mic. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Describe that. Go ahead. Uh, someone who is climaxing to fruition here, and it's a, it's a muscular woman who has also male geni genitalia. And then there's there's there, fluid I said from there. the breast and the phallus. Oh, I didn't see the fluid from the breast. Yeah. Where do you see fluid? Right here. She's leaking from everywhere. Oh, my and God. She is Jewish, apparently. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. This one is, uh, are you familiar with Mario Brothers? I am. Oh. 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 I'll never play Mario Brothers again. No. Oh, And then this Lord. is kind of a classic hentai with the tentacles. For some reason, there's always tentacles ew, involved. Ew. <laughs> you want to describe this one, Mom? No, I don't. <laughs> and then this is The Simpsons. Oh, Lord. You want to describe that one? Doggy style. <laughs> oh, good one. But what's happening literally, to Marge? Literally well, yeah, literally, style. literally, the dog is having his way with the... <laughs> With Marge, yes. With Marge, I'm yes. Sure you're gonna oh, this is Beauty and the Beast. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Which really is the story. Let's face it. Beauty and the Beast is about bestiality. That's Beauty and the always Beast. always bothered me. Right. Well, that's... well, I don't know if they consummate. Well, they don't but... consummate. No. Their... Oh, he became a prince. But, I mean, he you know he. I mean, but that you know beast took not... what he wanted. Hell, hell yes. All right. That's hentai. Thank you. Go sit down, Dad. Oh, my okay. God. <laughs> so that's hentai, just to introduce you. All right. Well, how did how did I live without knowing that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the porn quiz. Now I'm going to quiz you both. You guys are working together. I've got the answers, and I'm going to ask the questions. Oh, by the way, don't forget Spook Magoop. There's money on the line here. Spook yeah, Magoop. Spook Magoop. Okay. You better define it for her again. No, I know what it is. What is it? It's when you're spooked and you're hiding. You're spook magook when you're hiding. Some of that anime might have spooked magook. Yeah, it definitely did. <laughs> Wake up. Play for that. <laughs> okay, well, you guys ready for this? Here we go. Yes. Question number one. What is the average age that kids start watching porn? Nowadays? Can we hit in, can we pipe in some like timer music, Dan? Like, boom, boom, like some. I would say now in the old days. They had magazines, this is but, but now kids all have access to computers. So oh, yeah. I would say 10 years old. Dad? I was going to say 10 also. You guys are very close. You know, when I guess like 13, but the answer is 11. Wow. Which is pretty fucked up. Kids that age should not be seeing hardcore pornography, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's... If things had been like this when I was in junior high, I probably never would have left the house. I just <laughs> I was been just home watching say porn that. all day. You're still in the bathroom. Things haven't changed. True. <laughs> you still don't leave the house for that reason. Uh, question number two. How many visits to Pornhub were there in the year 2019? How many visits to the website Pornhub in 2019? How many visitors to this one website? Are we talking about in the whole year individual, for, for, are or talking? are we counting the same worldwide people back again? Whoa, yes. worldwide visits to Pornhub billion, billion. Here, I'll give you multiple choice. Okay, hundred million. Okay, three billion, forty-two billion. I'd say forty-two billion. Three billion. Men think about sex like every 10 seconds. The answer is 42 billion. Yeah. Can you believe that? 42 I'm billion. I'm not surprised. Uh, that surprised me. I mean, wow, that's a lot. Nah. Well, if you if you if you take like, you know, there's 300 million people in the United States. Yeah, but people will visit that website again and again and no, again. No, I know. I'm just I'm trying to calculate how many visits is that per person per year. Oh. And it's not like that's the only porn site either. <laughs> right. No, it's not. Like there's like Team Skeet, for example. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, they got to start paying us. <laughs> Team Skeet, con contact us. 
Skeet me over some cash. They they come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Eat me and skeet me some cash. Okay. Where in the United States has the most searches for hentai pornography? The South, the Midwest, the West Coast, or the East Coast? Who is consuming... The South. The hentai pornography. The South. Why do you say the South? Because most people from the South are very judgmental. Mm -hmm. They tend to be more uh, conservative. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just all wound up really tight. And I think... They can't get enough of that hentai I think porn. so. I could be wrong. Dad, South, Midwest, West Coast, East Coast. We're talking about hentai porn. I don't... Well, you know, it's probably not the obvious answer, which would be West Coast or East Coast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Midwest. I think they may have more access to the Internet than people in the South have, where, you know, they're still using smoke signals and other types <laughs> of, of primitive communication. I disagree. Uh, it's so, the West. It's West Coast. It's oh, all is it? Boys it is West Coast? People like really? Dan and Ian. Wow. And dad, apparently, because you knew what hentai was. Don't act like you didn't watch Beauty and the Beast porn. Well, just because I can define something doesn't mean I am well-versed in it. Okay, this this is funny. What was the most popular search on Pornhub in North Dakota? North Dakota. The options are student teacher, do not come challenge, country girls make doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> And taking horse cock. You want me to read those again? We're talking about most popular search, Pornhub search in North Dakota. Student teacher, do not come challenge, country girls makes doo-doo, and uh, taking horse cock. I'll say the first one. Student teacher? I think Okay, a student, safe bet. Student sure. teacher. Sure. What was the popular second fans. one again? A do not come challenge. I'll go with that one just to be different from... Well, my um, dad, dad, you truly have your pulse <laughs> on the Pornhub. Do not come challenge is correct. Thank you. I personally would have guessed country girls make doo-doo. <laughs> but uh, hey. No scat. <laughs> Which state has the shortest, shortest average watch time? Of what? A.K.A. which people people that come the quickest, is, I think that's what that means. Well, not the people who are watching the challenge, probably. Right. Do not come challenge. <laughs> you know what? This one, you're never going to guess it. It's Kansas. The average time is nine minutes, five seconds. Now, I don't know how long. Oh, the, that, that seems like a lot. Like, I'm how me, do they when know? I'm on those websites, I'm in and out. Nine minutes is a long, is a big investment. Yeah, who's timing this? Oh, they can tell. You go on the site. And then they leave, and you have they set what wow. so they can track how long people are on the on the site. Sure, nine minutes. Hmm. I mean, how long. much more time are you going to spend on? Porn? Who's got time for all that? You can spend an hour on there. I mean, it's a lot. I know. Don't people have to work? Doesn't I got shit to do. Doesn't speak well of the quality of porn they're watching. I I think you know. You I gotta, think it's the opposite. You got to have the plot develop, and oh, you need the God. action and the denouement and the you whole, like that the whole story. You know? I personally disagree. If it's really good, then you're done. You're in. You're get, out. Get to the chase. <laughs> right. Okay. Which state has the longest watch time? That would be Mississippi with an average of 11 and a half minutes. Mississippi? Oh, Mississippi. Not much different from the shortest. It's no, not really. More. That's so strange. Okay, here, this is a great one. Mom, what is a dirty Sanchez? Do you know a dirty a Sanchez? A dirty Sanchez. Yes. What is a dirty Sanchez? I believe I know that. Is Thanks that when to, you take it up the butt or something? Close. So That's I part of it. I, I, I'll give Howard Stern credit for me knowing this. Dad, would you like to define what a dirty Sanchez is? I think it's uh, uh, receiving oral favors while sitting on the toilet. That's that would be what? a blumpkin. That's well, a blumpkin. Oh, blumpkin. You're right. Yes. <laughs> See, there is a name for that also. <laughs> okay, it, dirty Sanchez. Do you want to take a guess? You just well, said I did. Sex? I, I well. So that's part of it. It's when you. Uh, rub after that act, you rub your member over your partner's lip, thereby giving them a mustache. Oh. Uh, called a dirty Sanchez. That's Ronnie's specialty. That's gross. That's pretty gross. Man, some people are really sick. You think? 
Dirty Sanchez. Uh, next up, what is edging? Ugh, I don't know why we have to do this one. Edging. Edging? Yeah. I can't. It's when your know. grass is growing over the sidewalk and you've got it. Let's the skip back. edging. Let's skip edging. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> okay, this is a weird one. I didn't know about this one. Okay, what is morning wood? Not morning, like when the sun comes up, but morning, like M O U R N. When you're in mourning, what is morning wood? A play on the classic morning wood. Is it when you wake up with a boner? The sexual pleasure one feels when using a powerful tool, such as an axe or chopping wood. The sadness one feels due to the loss of a boner or when one pops a boner at a funeral or wake. I'd say the last. Yeah, this is a weird one, guys. Where did this one come from? Morning wood. When you're in morning, is that does that uh, does that excite people to be in morning? I don't That's know, a man. It's like a the weird human take. being. The human race is it's really a weird take perverted. on wedding crashers. It's like we're gonna go to funerals and not meet women instead of weddings. Right. That was actually a plot point in Wedding Crashers, but I think we could do a spinoff of Wedding Crashers called Morning Wood. Where they go pick up chicks at funerals. I'd watch that. A.K.A. Funeral <laughs> Crashers. Yeah. No, we'll call it Morning Wood. All right. Well, Thank next you. week. Thanks. Stay tuned next week. You guys week. are. What? Okay. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Okay. Wow. What is. This is a new one for me. What is a Twitter bang? A Twitter. Bang. I'm just gonna define it. No yeah, idea. I don't have I never a heard clue. Of it. It's when you have sex with someone whom you've exchanged less than 140 words with. A Twitter bank. Wow, that's very specific. It should be characters. It should be characters, not words. Characters. Sorry, I think it was misdefined by mm. someone. Yeah, characters. No, I don't like that one. That's <laughs> okay. Now this is a speed run, so I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of fast ones. This is sex. Is this Sex slang or old English? So I'm going to give you an example of one. Okay. I'll give you one now just to get you guys warmed up, okay? So this is going to be fast and furious. And you have to tell me, sex slang or old English? So the first one here, this is just a test. The do beater. The do beater. Sex slang or old English? Do beater. I would say old English. Oh, you guys are right. It means an especially large shoe and and consequentially a clumsy or awkward person, a do-beater. Okay, ready, guys? Ready. All right, here we go. A Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Old English or sex slang? Sasquatch. Sex slang. I would agree. Sex slang. Sex slang is correct. When an unkempt pubes begins to grow down your thighs. <laughs> yeah. What is that you called? I thought of a word for that. <laughs> Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Okay. Like a Sasquatch? Sasquatch? It's a good okay. play on words. When uncapped right. pubes okay. begin to grow down your thighs. Okay, ready? A bareback. Bareback. Old English or sex slang? Bareback. Sex slang. Sex. Not wearing a condom. You or riding it. a horse without a saddle in Old English. You so. guys got that one right. <laughs> Driggle drink. Driggle drink. English, old, old English. English. Man, you guys are on fire. You haven't missed yet. An untidy woman, a drink drink. Oh, I'm after remember Dringle, that drangle. one. Dringle, <laughs> dringle, 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 dringle. All right, here we go. Driggle drangle. <laughs> what am I? It's driggle jangle. I mean, it's close enough. You're adding a few consonants. <laughs> driggle, <laughs> drang, dra, draggle, 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 draggle. What is that? Like a like a someone unkept. Like a, I mean, I, I hate like this word, but like woman? a slut back in the day, a no, dribble draggle. No, no, not no, just like nothing a bad sexual. Oh, just oh, okay, just messy. Somebody, Somebody who un- leaves, yeah, and it doesn't un- clean up. Bit your of house. a dribble draggle. Yeah, the opposite of your mother. Mm, we should bring that back. <laughs> it's a fun word to say. A bit dribble draggle. Dribble draggle. draggle. All right, up next, jelking, jelking, sex, sex word. I'm going to go with Old English. Okay, we have a split decision. Do you guys want to come to an agreement here on jelking? How do you spell cum? How do I spell cum? It's a joke. Okay, never mind. (laughs) It's a joke. Jelking. (laughs) 
The fans will get it. It is yeah. a whatever sex slang. Thank you. It means this is weird, you guys. I'm sorry about this. The practice of, of stroking the penis when erect in a particular way to increase its size. I don't fucking know. What's that the is. difference between that and regular? Isn't that the whole point? I don't it says know. This is a sim- like oh, I think I know what that means. It's a similar concept to using a penis, but I think it means when you like pull it. That that must mean what jelking is. I'm glad okay. the demonstration helped. <laughs> yeah. Pull. Interesting. Okay, jelking. All right, here we go. Pegging. Pegging. Old English or uh, sex act? I'd say old English. Pegging. Sex act. Dad knows what pegging is. Hide it up. He's been you around. Do? He's been around too long. Pegging. Now, pegging is. Dad, go ahead and define pegging. I know you know what that is. I don't remember exactly, and uh-huh. I'm not playing naive here, but I know it is. It's when some. It's when a. I think specifically, I. I, I it's when a woman straps on and does the deed on the. Oh, okay. Pegging. Yes. Oh, that pegging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. There. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. Here we go. A jilly wet foot. A jilly wet foot. That's got to be old English. All I right. would agree. Final answer. You're right. I wish Jilly Wetfoot was a porn act. <laughs> what is what is yeah, it? Mean? What it's is a that? swindling businessman, the old Jilly Wetfoot. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have sploshing, sploshing, sploshing. That sounds like a sex term. I'm going to agree. Sploshing, you guys are correct. It is a sex term. A sexual fetish that entails bringing food into your sex life, a la George Costanza. Right. Eating a sandwich. Especially and- <laughs> large quantities of food so that things get messy. Sploshing. Man, you guys nailed that. Uh, you guys, like, literally. Yeah. Really good. Thank you. Thank destroyed you. that. Congratulations, man. What an accomplishment. <laughs> Sploshing. Didn't make $100, though, Donna. Get with the program. Oh, I didn't. What's the word again? Spook. Spook McGook. Spooked McGooked. Spook McGook. Spooked McGook. Spooked McGooked. Well, that whole segment spooked McGooked me. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that was proper, but I think we need a more (laughs) spontaneous usage. Can we discuss the word shoddy? Oh, shoddy? Shouty? Yeah, you want to comment on shouty? Oh my God! Seem to be a lot of uh, seem to be a few that. critics of your pronunciation. I said of it that perfectly word. fine. Shouty. Many, yes, many people saying you have no right to tell your parents how to pronounce it when you're. You say it. Shouty. 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 Go ahead and say it. Shouty. 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 What? Yeah. Shouty. Your dad. Your dad's saying it more Take probably. Shouty. 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 You- like you keep you saying shouty, like shouting. Yeah, I'm obviously overpronouncing it for a comedic value here, guys. <laughs> okay, well. But my dad uh, is shouty. It's my shouty. Your dad's right, though. That uh, Or is it shouty? Like, like she's shouty. shouty. Like he's my shouty. He's my other half. Sha. You Sha. think it's shouty. Shoddy. Uh-huh. Sha. He's, oh, it's shoddy? No, it's not. S H A W. That was the Did majority. you not see the comments last week? Shoddy. Yeah, yeah. Literally, sure. like. Eighty mm-hmm. percent of the comments were calling you. No, out I for- saw them. <laughs> so- I refuse to. I- <laughs> okay, you're not backing down. Got to internalize it. That's fair. Uh, shouty. Wait, because it's be- shorty, shouty, can't not he- shoddy. Can he be my sh- shoddy? I don't know, Gary. Can you be her shoddy? Go shouty. <laughs> it's your birthday. We go on a party. I don't like know. It's your birthday. We're going to drink Bacardi. Well, like he is a short your birthday. Thing. Okay, that was to follow up on my CeeLo. Okay, you got to give it a little bit. I still think it's shouty because you're saying shorty, shorty, shouty, shoddy, shoddy. Hey, shoddy. We don't make this up. I'm just, we're just reporting. So, oh, so we're going to do James Charles, but my mom, as I was going to the bathroom, grabbed. Yes, I'm freezing. Show this off, though. It's so beautiful. It looks great on you. Stand up, Donna. Wow. That is. uh, It's the uh, the Bear Bear sweater, mole hair. Super plush, wow. super beautiful, I premium. Work really it. Cute. Is that available? Because everyone wants what mom wears, and I then think it they will be available on know, Thursday. It's nice and yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I think I so. love it. It's beautiful. It's nice okay. and warm. So All right, so mom, I believe you have James oh. Charles notes. So you know, James Charles is a topic we've talked a Perfect. lot about, but recently he was in trending on Twitter again. My mom is here to explain why. How many pages of notes do you have today? Well, you know, this was a, this was actually notes from other things. I don't think I put. Can I take a? No, no, no. This was about my butterflies. So, mom, um, 
Would you like to James introduce? James Charles. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Here's the deal. Okay. I sound like President Biden. Here's the deal, folks. <laughs> there are 17-year-olds, and then there are 17-year-olds, and there's 22-year-olds, and there's 22-year-olds, which reminds me of a story. Mm-hmm. When your brother was celebrating his bar mitzvah at 13, mm. they had balloons and they that were filled with helium. Mm-hmm. And the kids went around popping the balloons and inhaling the helium. Mm-hmm. And I went to a bar mitzvah of your cousin, Adam's. And the boys were dancing with the girls. And in fact, they had roaming hands. Okay. So some kids, you know, are more mature than others. Being Which that, one's more mature? Well, they were the same age, but like, you know, Adam's friends from the city were like, they were interested you in- You felt they had grown up a little faster. Yeah, they were okay. a little faster. Okay. okay. Wouldn't call that, okay, okay. All right. Well, that being said, I think- I don't like where this is going. But. I think that this <laughs> James Charles yeah. is very immature. Okay, Mm -hmm. he's very immature. I think that most guys, I don't want to generalize, but a lot of guys at the age of 22 are very immature. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, and um, one thing that you need to know, James, if you're- Oh, we're talking directly to James. If you're Uh paying attention- He is, he's watching. He was over for dinner last night. Okay. He's listening. The thing is- there is a legal age, mm-hmm. and you can't be under 18. Wait, and hold on. We just got done talking about how dad, as 21-year-old, well, that's why that, that's when you were 16. That's oh. why I said no, there are 17-year-olds, and they're Mom 20. said that. Okay, the point is, 17 to 22, it's only five years, okay? 17. The point of the matter is... You went to jail already. You got in trouble. Wait, whoa, whoa. James didn't go to, went jail. to jail. I thought he went I thought he went to jail. Oh, okay. I'm glad I'm familiar with this one. James wow. has never been to jail. He never went to prison. He should, for that? should have been. Yeah, he right. should have been. Oh, okay. For some reason I thought I I, I <laughs> thought I read that he he had Serve time or something oh because goodness. of it. She no, probably, well, okay, I she probably saw all of her uh, thumbnails on the podcast of <laughs> him maybe, in the orange maybe. jumpsuit. No, I, I think you're confusing is that he's gotten in trouble for doing this before. Oh, Twitter he has gotten or something. Okay, like that, so. mm-hmm. he's lost. Because YouTube, you, uh, YouTube like demonetized him for a minute. Okay, right. I think that happened. Yeah. Well, I love that. They're like, oh, you, you're flirt, you're trying to hook up with young boys. We'll demonetize you for two weeks. Right. I just think he's got a career. He's fortunate enough at this young age to be financially successful and yeah. have a following that he has. Mm-hmm. And for him to be so careless, you know, careless. is is foolish for one. And then um, I think that... You know, if he, I understand someone like him, he wants to meet someone mm-hmm. and, and it's very hard for someone who maybe is, you know, well-known, he can't exactly go to the, you know, mm-hmm. uh, There's different, you know, yeah, okay. I mean, there are different yeah. websites, yeah, yeah, but yeah. obviously you have to be anonymous, you know, being that if, if he comes out and says, there oh, I'm James for Charles. celebrities. Yeah. Oh, there are? Yeah. Okay. It's me, Ben Affleck. Why did you unfriend me? Well, I mean, I, I, okay. I, I don't understand why he's not attracted to guys maybe that are well, older. Here, here's the problem with James Charles, too. He got in trouble for this before. Right. And he said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then he got in trouble for it again. Right. So it's almost like he can't help himself going after the younger guys. Well, well there's no consequences. There's no major consequences. And when you watch his his video about... You know, his mea culpa, oh, I'm going to apologize and explain the whole thing. What's his motivation? Um, I'm lonely. I'm desperate to meet someone. So desperation is excuse for constantly going after underage uh, boys. Mm -hmm. And it just happens over and over again. I think he has a deep-seated desire to be caught and face some consequences. Really? As kind of a way to... Cure himself, perhaps. You think he wants I disagree. to get caught? Well, he I just disagree. is doing more, so and more obvious things. It's so brazen, like the thing with 
pink or purple I think he, or whatever I think that people like that gamer. can feel privileged and so that they don't face consequences. But, you know, he's just immature. And he maybe he feels more comfortable with a younger boy opposed to an older man because he doesn't feel secure enough to go with a guy that's 23. Yeah, you can't excuse he's, predatory he, action. He's continually predatory. said that he prefers younger men. He likes to date men who look as young as possible who are legal. He said that on his right. show. Okay. But the problem is, and also, how do you feel about the fact that he's tapping his audience Young boys, some That's of them wrong. were as young as like. How how young were they? I don't want to speak at a term, but I'm. I thought it was I'm just seventeen. Like oh God! See now that now if you there was a thirteen year old in there was or there fourteen fifteen. I thought it was for 17. sure there was one fifteen. But well, let's say fifteen. But did he know he was fifteen? He says he didn't, but he doesn't do his due diligence to check. He's right, like, okay. right. That's another. Well, oh. this one young man, purple. I mean, I saw you when you were thir- 15. It's pretty obvious when someone's 15 or 21. Right. It's a huge difference. Yeah. So what's the deal with purple? Because this is what he got canceled for, something about this gamer purple. And right. I'm not And I'm He's not 17 close. years old. He okay. used to be called Pool Boy 3 at one time. And I think he changed his, <laughs> his name. But, you know. What he, does purple do? Who is he? He 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 does. Uh, he's known for playing gamer. games. Okay. I think he, what what was the game that he Let's liked to play? There. Wait, let me see. Yeah. Uh, Let's see if we have it written down let here. Let me see. He's he's known for a particular game. Oh I, yeah, I do have it. Is it Pong? Go ahead. He's well known for streaming Minecraft. Oh, there you go. Nailed it on his Twitch channel. Nailed it. And he's seven, and and his bio states that he's seventeen years old. So so, what's the problem? The problem is James, knock it off. What did he do? I don't know what he did. Well, he he just liked him. He he went on his. There was a picture that someone posted of him with the uh, email or text message he had sent. He just very want, suggestive yeah. and just you know. I don't think it was suggestive. The thing that I read just saying that he liked him and one of the other. Uh, Can I pull up? I got to pull this up to see because I am doubting your guys' uh, reporting huh. on this one. Okay, so here's an article that, that details exactly what happened. So this is from Newsweek. They say, James Charles is facing another bout of criticism after the YouTuber tagged an underage streamer on Instagram. Social media, per- social media personality is still dealing with the fallout from his recent grooming allegations and had just made his online comeback in recent weeks. Charles was accused of inappropriate sexual behavior and in April admitted to sending flirty texts to minors. Um, so what? He just tagged him? But I yeah, want to see the just, post. he just tagged him. Where's the post? What, uh, okay, here's the post. This is the post. That's it. So he was in a robe. He's in a robe. What's with the robe, though? It's like it's like suggestive. It's called the the game that he's playing is some kind of bedroom game or no? He's playing Minecraft. Called, no, this wasn't Minecraft. It was this another is Minecraft. Game. Okay, mom. There's That's- a game that that they play. It's called Bedroom or something, <laughs> and it's it's not a sexual game. It's just. James is, I'm, I find this suggestive, the bathrobe and stuff. Yes, it's definitely So he says, about to get glam featuring real purple playing Bed, Bed Wars. Wars. To that's keep what me it is. Bed Wars. It, it's a game. Bed Wars is a game. Right. Okay. So, hmm. I think people are just like, dude, with everything you've done, let's not be tagging kids. Right. Right. And then bake cookies. Yeah. <laughs> bless, bless you. Like I'm chasing after underage boys, and now let's make some cookies. Because oh, there. Well, okay. Let me ask you about this photo. This was a recent one. Oh, with he, his pants unzipped. This is a recent one, and again, this is coming off of accusations of grooming and s- sending flirty texts to minors. He literally said, "Sending flirty texts to minors." I don't know how you outlive that. You says I sent flirty texts to minors. Here's a photo he just dropped a few days ago of him in an arcade. Right. Close to arcades. <laughs> Kids? With, and he's sitting there with his pants on. Kids. And then he, his zipper is, on, is down. So I'm sure that was an accident. So what do you think about this photo? I think, 
I think he might have a problem. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I really thought at the beginning that, you know, he's immature. He finds young men attractive because of him in immaturity. He kind of feels like he relates to a younger person. But if he keeps on getting older and still focuses on younger kids, then... He gets he older, but the kids stay the same age. He's right. got a problem. Well, yeah, there's going to be a point where something's going to happen that he will face consequences for, which he hasn't done yet. I mean, there's a difference things. There's a difference between... Like, there, there are actors and people, men especially, that are dating women that are half their age. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it happens and guys go, oh, yeah, way but, to go. Or if they're half the age, right, but how they're, old are they? Well, like if you're, say, if that, you're in your 40s and you're dating a girl that's only 20. Yeah, Leave he's, Zach he's Braff he's and texting, like, Lawrence Pugh 15, out of this. 16. Right, but the point is, she's legal. She's legal, she's an adult, she can make her own decisions. If he's focusing on... Um, young boys that are minor. You can't tell me he's not looking to pick up boys in that arcade. No, it, it, that looks like. And he's, he's glammed up too. He's looking for some hot ass in that arcade. Why would yeah. he take a photo? No of one's himself, gonna know it's though. him. Yeah, Again, and he's photo? begging to be caught. Begging. And this outfit is so outrageous. And just the whole thing is like, dude, after everything you've been through, let's not go cruising through arcades. Let's not go tagging 17-year-old Minecraft players. Just shut the fuck up you think and he... lay low and stop being a pedo. Sorry. I mean pedo. Maybe not pedo, but do you predator. think do you think that that was just a photo shoot? Or do you think I mean photo he's shoot. not really he's not really hanging around in but arcades. He like <laughs> he could be. Why did he go to the arcade? He just went there for a photo? He's out there. He's playing Street Fighter with a bunch of kids, dude. Well. He's playing. You know who he plays in? in uh, uh, yeah. Maybe not. Well, I'm spooked magooped at the thought that, that he spooked magooped. Spooked? Magooped. Magoop. Isn't that the word? Yeah, I think you got it. I think you got it. All right. Uh, that he is attracted to just underage children. I am very smoke magooped about that yep. myself. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is he's he's very immature, but he will get older. And if he still focuses well, you know, on young boys, then he's got a problem. Dad, you want to say anything? Uh, spoo you spooked magooped? <laughs> I'm not getting paid for it, right? No. <laughs> and I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> Pay me or, no, or shut up or nothing. Yeah, no, it's... Put up or shut pretty up. Pretty much <laughs> made all my comments on that. He's just... Uh, needs to stop. What is he, 24 million subs or something like that? I know, he's so foolish. Very popular and just going to flush it all down the... You know, before I even knew anything about him, mm. a while back... I was on YouTube and I saw him mm -hmm. and he's so talented. Yeah, I really, I you know, I don't really wear very much makeup, but I thought, well, maybe I should learn. And I watched some of his videos and uh, he's really, sister. he's really very talented. And then of course you find out about this and it's like, your sister really? snapped. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. There you heard it from my parents here. The man, the kid, the, the man has a problem. I think so. It's spooky magooky. Yeah. It is. All right, let's move on. Do to I our, get $100? Yes, you absolutely <laughs> do. You absolutely do. And a yes. round of applause. There's lunch. Okay, we're going for lunch. All right. You earned it. <laughs> like, you guys are so poor, you can't afford to eat unless I give you 100 bucks. Damn. Well, it's nice. And we don't even get the money in cash. It's like I got to put on my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, Gary. Fine. Thank you. <sighs> All right, let's move on to advice. We actually have some really good ones here. Okay. These ones are right. some doozies in here. S some serious. Uh, yeah, actually really okay. good submissions. So here's the first All one. Right. This guy matched with his therapist on Tinder. <laughs> Wild. That's amazing so that you can do that. But, yeah, okay. well, here, so here's the message. Okay. For context, we are both young guys in our 20s. Can you, wow, that's a really, that's a really a young, young therapist. Yeah, yeah, very young therapist. He must Guess be 29, well, super maybe. smart and Late 20s. skipped ahead. Okay. He's the only person I've ever felt so comfortable to be myself around. Well, he's your therapist. Right. When we matched, he told me he had never met someone like me and immediately felt a connection in our sessions. Didn't want to acknowledge it in our sessions since. 
but we are still talking and sending pictures. He said, even if I stop being his patient, he could lose his job and possibly even face jail time. Obviously, I would not want to risk that, but how would they even know? Is this something I should let go, or is there something else I could do? It's ironic that I'm the one pushing the boundaries when he's been helping me create mine, but we both like each other. I feel like he wouldn't keep talking to me if there wasn't some chance there. That's a doozy. Well, here's a little research I did find in preparing to answer this question. Well, can I give my answer first? Yeah. Okay, it's really not that uncommon for for a patient to fall in love with their therapist. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when you share all of your thoughts and secrets and you feel like you're in a safe zone. Mm-hmm. And well, as they said here, he said, I've never felt so comfortable to be myself around. So that's a little bit of a... Right. Of the therapist love mm-hmm. trap. Right. Well, you know, I mean, your therapist is there for you. Right. He wants exactly. to guide you. He wants to help <laughs> once you. Had a relationship. He listens. Yeah. So, um, oh, that soda pop. Anyway, uh, so it's it's not uncommon, you know, for you to fall in love with your therapist. And on the other side of the coin, it's really not that uncommon for therapists to fall in love with patients. Mm, that's because un- they un- super imbe- unethical. Yeah, it that is unethical. I'm just saying, not that they have to act on it, but um, when you have all this time invested in another person, you 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 f- you see them on a regular basis. You focus on their needs. It's almost like someone who's a saver. You so know what, what? What should he do? That's it's part. unethical, and he shouldn't. He should just. Either if he if he thinks that the therapist is 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 helping him, uh, and he can handle how his feelings are, he can express it to the therapist. Although I think the therapist knows how he feels about him. Um, well, according to him, he says they're still chatting and sending photos, which sounds a little flirty. He's saying it's unethical, like he and he shouldn't go there. He he really he he needs to not go there. It's not because in my mind. If for some reason, which it is unethical, and they were to have a relationship, down the road, would this would this patient feel like, oh, is he flirting with one of his other patients? And it's just it's just a can of worms. It's not ethical. You shouldn't go there. There's someone out there that you will love. Let the guy help you. Or if you don't feel comfortable, find yourself another therapist. Need a new therapist. Cut that's, it off. That's what I think. Get a new therapist. So here's a little research I found. Not in the state of California. Not only is it unethical; it's actually illegal for um, oh yeah for there to be any kind of relationship, sexual contact between a therapist and their client. It's always the responsibility of the therapist to ensure that sexual contact with a client, whether consensual or not, obviously not consensual, is illegal. <laughs> we don't need that clarified. It uh, does not occur. So here's what I think. Uh, get the fuck away from this guy, man. That is so fucked up that he's even still talking to you. And like you said, leading you on to the point where you say, oh, there's still a chance. I mean, if that, first of all, it's good that he's not, uh, he's not responding. But for him to even entertain you with the stuff of like. Sending pictures. Sending pictures. For, I mean, he matched him on Tinder. That means he swiped green on him. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's already enough. But he said he felt like he said uh, immediately. He can be, he, he's manipulating his feelings, maybe. He said he's never, God, where'd it go? He's the only, sorry, hold on. When we matched, he told me he had never met someone like me and immediately felt the connection in our sessions. This guy is bad news, bro. Trust me, that is not a good partner for you. This guy is extremely unethical. And if he was, dude, he would not be saying this stuff. He would not be leading you on. This is very dangerous territory for both of you. And nothing good is going to come out of this. And, you know, besides it being illegal and unethical for him, I don't trust this guy at all. Someone who's willing to, despite his, his professional duties and ethical duties to put you in a position to make you even think that there's a chance, a romantic chance between you two. It's is highly, highly fucked up. It seems like a a large 
Definitely. Segment of what your training is, is realizing this is going to happen to you when you're open Boundaries. with people and people open up to you. Right. So you need to know, you need to expect it and you need to know how to handle it professionally. Right. right. Which this guy is not doing at all. Well, he said that the therapist is in his 20s. So he's young sure. too. Well, regardless, I'm just, he has, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't. It, it's not, it's not, it, you have to yeah, make. you got to run. So, I mean, first of all, like this says, it's the always the therapist's responsibility. Remember that. It's not your fault that you're sexually, you're attracted to this guy and you want to get with him. That's, that's not, that's fun. That happens. You know what I mean? It's his responsibility as the professional to keep these boundaries clean. So if, if the fact, he should theoretically be saying, we, I can't continue to be your therapist. Right. Right. It's, it states that he, he points out that it's unethical and that he could be thrown in jail. Yes, he said that, but he, all, but it also but, says he continues to text him and share. Yeah, photos. that's, that's not, that's, that's not cool. No. Because they, that he, he finishes by saying he wouldn't keep talking to me if there wasn't some chance there. Time to call the medical board. I agree. Just get out. Because no he's going to do it again. This, guy, this person is in the wrong career. Not good. Yeah, I if, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I think wouldn't if, if he's if he's not going to tell you, listen, it's not appropriate. We shouldn't keep doing this. Then then I'm going to suggest that you remove yourself from this. Situation. And don't forget, this is this is a one sided point of, of course. view. We yeah. don't really know what the what the therapist said to him. He did state that it was unethical. I don't understand about the swapping of pictures though. That's uh it's not a good We don't love it's it. It's not a good thing. We're out. Get We're out, out of there, bro. There's good people out there. Yeah. Get the frick out of there. Okay. Do you know James part. Charles? Maybe he could. James, exactly. <laughs> he's looking. Although it's Wait, he's, he's, in his too, 20s. Old. Yeah, he's too old. Yeah, too old. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Too old. If there's a two plus in the front, <laughs> it's too old for James. Advice. This is specifically for you, Mom. Um, hey guys, I recently found out that my boyfriend has been smoking weed. Mm. I'm not super against it. However, I don't think that I like him doing it. What advice do you have where I won't come off as controlling? Or have to give him an ultimatum. Well, she knew he did. She wait. She said, "She I just knew, found oh, out. She just found out. Okay. Yeah. I I'd say go this ahead, is Dad. for me. Okay. Excuse me, Dad. Yeah, Dad. I know nothing about any of this. So I'll just. <laughs> Well, from a woman, you know, I think she values your input. Right. You know, I don't have a problem with someone smoking. Mm -hmm. um, I think like at the end of your day, the end of, you know, mm -hmm. a busy. I mean, some people will have a drink. Some people like to smoke. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with it. If she does, then... You know, then she needs to possibly look for somebody else. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> that is you know, I know seriously. I mean, if I had a, if, my, if, if dad, if dad was someone who drank a lot. Dad smokes a lot. He does smoke. He a plays four twenty all day, every day. Plays. You know, no, 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 I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. You, Just no, you I can don't. tell the truth here. No, you know, someone who smokes constantly. Dad smokes constantly, doesn't he? Yeah, I but he's not. not working. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not critiquing. You no, I was going to say for twenty with this guy. I mean, if he's a wakey bakey, that's not good. No, I generally if it's never, at the end of the never day, never smoke. During most daylight hours, like until after three the or four. The sun goes four, down, right. the bowl yeah. gets lit. Then time to relax. Right. But before that, right. to get things done, you just <laughs> what time can't. Do, wait, what time do you start blazing? Three or four a.m. Damn. A.m.? Oh, no. a.m.? <laughs> I was like, whoa. Uh, no, it doesn't sometime stop in the afternoon. Three or four right? Yeah, exactly. Me and Judge Judy. You're going to go home and smoke a bowl. No, it's too mm. early. What time is it? Come on, it's two. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's just time. it's just something that that people will do to relax, like have a, an after dinner drink. And but the thing is, you know, they're just dating. It's not like they have children, and she has to worry so about your him. Is dump him. Well, I if, no, it's not that she should brutal. If she's in love with him, right? We're missing some details here. Then you know. 
it's a part of who he is. Can and I can just, I take a stab at this? Sure, go ahead. I'm going to make some assumptions here. First of all, she says, I just found out my boyfriend's been smoking weed. That indicates that he's been smoking weed for a long time, and right. she didn't even know. And so clearly it. he's using it responsibly it. enough right. to where it's not interfering with his life in a detrimental way. So you go on to say, I don't like him doing it. Why don't you like him doing it? It seems to have his shit together because you didn't realize that he was smoking this whole time. Unless he didn't smoke a lot when they first met. How long have they been No, she been said, dating? I found out that my boyfriend has been smoking weed. Yeah, but how long have they You're been You're right, boyfriend we're missing some context. There's a, lot, there's a lot missing. But what I'm going to tell you is that I think she's wrong, personally. Because she's saying, how do I tell, why do you, why do you want him you, to stop using? You can't change someone. He is who he is. And either you feel comfortable with it and it's okay, or you're dating the wrong guy. Well, what's her issue? Would she object if he was having a couple beers when he came well, home? She, Would that bother her also? Yeah, it's not very specific. She said, what advice do you have where I won't come off as controlling or I'd have to give him an ultimatum? There's no advice. You are going to come off as controlling mm -hmm. and you are going to have to give him an ultimatum. So either you're going to have to accept that this guy smokes weed. And I agree, he needs to be using it responsibly. I think he has been if you haven't noticed until right. now. right. And so, you know, if he's if he's not if he's doing a shitty job at work or not taking care of his shit at home, then obviously he's got a problem. And then and then that's a whole different conversation. But, you know, if he's just doing something he enjoys, is not ref not affecting the rest of his life. That's legal and not harming anyone. Then then I don't think you you ha I don't think you need to tell him to stop doing it. Yeah. Know? And if this was right. 10 years ago when it was still illegal then you got a whole different story. You're going right. to get arrested. You're going to ruin, you know, our future, blah, blah, blah. But now it's lethal. perfectly legal. Yeah. And it's just I don't see where right. she's coming yes. from. She needs I to agree. think about why is this bothering me so much? Well, you know, some people are straight as an arrow and they feel the way they feel. And it's not going to change. And if it bothers her that much... Just, she's dating the wrong like a guy. Bad reason to break up with someone. I mean, look, welcome to the. I'm not saying she should world. break up with him, but she either has to well, we accept it yeah. or move on. We don't have enough information here, but I don't think it's right for you to ask him to stop because you don't like it. We need more information here. Why don't you right. like it? Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Rewrite in again with more details. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or come on down. Okay. Finally, we've got advice needed ASAP with peace and love. Hi, Donna, Gary, and Ethan. I need some advice for mature people who are still happily married. My boyfriend seems to only follow half-naked Instagram models on social media, and he also likes and comments weird things on their pictures, such as, I bet you smell good. The other thing is he doesn't even follow me on Instagram. I feel like I will never live up to or look like the photoshopped images of these girls. I think men have forgotten what actual female bodies look like, and it makes me insecure that he will never be completely satisfied with me. What should I do about this, and how can I feel more secure in my relationship? Well, can, you, wait, can I take oh this? Oh, yeah, please. Because you're really good at, at advice, so I'll give you mine first. <laughs> um, I think... Now, can she? How does she find out what he's looking it's at? It's all public. It you is all see, public. Yeah, you can see what they're liking. So it's not like she's being sneaky and and and. and I don't think it's sneaky. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. easy to find. All right. Um, I think if he is interacting with these women he and says, saying things you like smell "you good. smell good," I, I think there's good. a problem. Yeah, I definitely think there's I a problem. I bet you smell good, bro. You know. Fuck that. That doesn't sound like a political discussion to me. Yeah. That's the only legitimate topic. There's no way to that. twist that. The smell. Yeah, there's no way to. Yeah. I, I bet you smell like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I mean, this guy's. He's got. Uh, he's some kind of insecurities or something. Because if he's got. A beautiful girlfriend. Mm. She's real. Mm. She's, it's, real. She's, she's not over the screen. I mean, I know some guys that are so addicted to pornography mm -hmm. that they would rather watch it than go. You got a live woman, you know. Hello. Mm. So, <laughs> anyone I, you know? No. No. Oh, okay. No. 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 <laughs> but you know, I. I. I mean, I could say get yourself a, some fancy you know, negligee and, you know, throw yourself at him. And, and, but somebody like that like usually that has issues. It's not, it's not her it's, problem to fix. 
I think he's got issues. He's got big, major issues. I think so too. This guy has got major fucking issues. First of all, as listen, I personally don't think. I think even following and liking Instagram models is is disrespectful in a relationship because first it's not it's like you can admire other women's beauty you can look at pornography and stuff I don't think that any of that's cheating but it's the social interaction that's cheating it's that the, is I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say it's cheating but it's very inappropriate Telling someone you, that, you know, that's that, way that, far. That's, that's way far. That's over, way over the line. But like, the, it's the social interaction, right? It's like the, it's the following. It's the investment, and then, and then the liking is, but the, the commenting is way too far. I bet you smell good. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Keep that shit to your fucking like, self. Like, because that's embarrassing to her. It's disrespectful. And by the way, nobody wants to see that. Not even the girl you're commenting on. That doesn't help anyone. I think in his head, he thinks like maybe I've got a chance, you know, that he's actually dating her or something. I no one's I, I that delusional. Know. You don't think anyone's that delusional? Mm -hmm. I honestly, why would he make a comment like that? I honestly that, then? can't even get in his head. I'm assuming he's just you smell good. I don't know. trying to be funny or who knows what. Based it's just on, a weird comment to me. Maybe make. he does want her to notice him. I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine I think, any reason. But but uh, the thing is. Girl, you got to get your man that will respect your boundaries and, and not make you feel insecure. I understand why you make you feel insecure because he's spending all day, you know, engaging with these with these models. He's got to make you feel beautiful and respected and and wanted. Right. And so he's not doing that. He's making you feel bad. And that's not OK. I raised such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and this so, discussion has gone on for years since the advent of Playboy, hmm. where it was, oh, you're looking at Playboy and these women don't have realistic bodies and you're setting your expectations too high. So it's kind of a carryover of that old discussion of, you know, what what's woman's image? What should men think of women? And, you know, it started with woman. the Barbie doll. Ew. <laughs> No, really, the Barbie doll. I mean, she's got this like little. But well, here there's there's two different conversations in here. One is about unrealistic images, but the other is about interacting with this content. Okay, that, that's the issue. The interacting I with the content is first of all, you got to tell him, yo, this makes me uncomfortable. You got to stop. If you love him, you want to make him work. You just got to be straight up, like this is disrespectful to me. I don't feel wanted. I don't feel beautiful. I don't want you doing this anymore. And I think that's a perfectly acceptable. If, cause if you want to make it work, I don't, you, that's perfectly acceptable to put that out there. Like as an ultimatum, like, yo, you got to stop this shit. Maybe he doesn't even know how it makes you feel. Right. Like, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And he shouldn't mind or object to that. Right. He's just giving her honest opinion of how I feel and then exactly. leave it up to him. Either he's going to continue or not continue and she can make a decision. Exactly. At that point. I, I, I totally agree. He, if he cares about you and he wants to make it work, he's going to be like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was making you feel that way. I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's a good man right there who's willing to change for you. But if he's going to continue doing this, dude, you got to get yourself someone who's going to make you feel respected and beautiful and wanted because this is not a good relationship. Fuck that guy. Cut him out. It's not your responsibility to make this guy want you more. That's fucking bullshit because you you will he will you will never make him happy enough. Maybe he uh, needs I, to I, smoke I, a little weed and chill out. <laughs> I, from you know, the I'd like to chime in on one particular thing. Mm -hmm. The comment that she made that he responded to the girl and said, I bet, bet you smell good. good. What's the expression? A, a a tiger doesn't change his stripes. Mm-hmm. This guy's. I think it's leopard and spots. But okay, whatever. leopard and spots, Never. tigers and stripes. <laughs> you know what? Kill him, crush him, not kill. Him. Honey, Don't kill him. You, honey, him. you are you are so worth a better man. I'd say dump his ass right now. Brutal, mom. Sorry. You talk know, to a, him. a guy's not going to go. Oh, I'm him. sorry. I didn't. You know, t watching things like that is one thing. You can't but say you smell good. That, that's, that's over the line. Way, Anyone way, that way, does way, not way. understand that, whether he's got a but girlfriend also, or not. But also like, oh, you look good. That's gross. You smell good? Like, I'm sorry. Why do you have to take it all the way there? What if he went back and told that same woman, you look like you stink? 
to make it up to her. Interesting suggestion. You look like you smell bad. Exactly. So Not I'm making out. it up to you, honey. I'm going to tell this woman she looks like she stinks. No. And now we're good. That's this a good girl, compromise. this girl is is so much worth more than what she's. No, you have to let my mom's talk going it out. for the kill. I no. recommend talking. To yeah, got to talk it out. No, I don't know how long they've no, been together. No talking. All right, mom is just straight to the uh, <laughs> brutal. I'm brutal. I'm going to have to go wipe out all my Instagram comments. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm brutal. So that's that. Bob, uh, that's the show, but my mom has something she wants. She wants to make a plea. My mom is a butterfly keeper, and she wants to make a plea to all of our followers. Go ahead. The monarch butterfly is in so much trouble. Mm. Most of the pollinators are in trouble, like the bees and and Mm. what have you. But, uh, you know, the Game and Fishing Commission, I mean, there's no safety net for these for these creatures Mm. and um so far this season i've released 50 monarch he's raised and released 50 monarch butterflies yes the queen it's only cost me a thousand dollars in oh it has not (laughs) it has not you know and um that it's really tough because of the fact that you know uh, there, there's no habitat for them. And then there's insecticides. Mm. And um, well, they only lay their eggs and eat a specific plant that right. grows wild in the West part of the United States. Milk that as they construct, they just dig it all under yeah. and it's they gone. They don't identify. They don't have, they don't know what they're they're digging up. And so it's it's really, really tough. So we, we they so, can't produce. So we need more milkweed. We need more milkweed. But I gotta tell you, it's a very high percentage of butterflies that don't make it out in the wild because they have so many predators. Hmm. It's insane. Well what can we do about that? You want us to kill a bunch of birds? No, it, what no, animals no, do no. we need to kill? Tell, pull, let's put a hit. Flies, flies are the flies, worst. Flies, birds, what else? Flies are the worst. Bats. But kill you know, them all. The, the thing is, if you can plant some milkweed, or at least if you're planting something and you see, identify a milkweed, mm. and you know, maybe write to. Um, well, the state of California just started a program where they're spending, I believe, ten million dollars. Oh, straight up planting on the milk? milkweed in the central parts of the state. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's you true. You take credit for that? No, but you, uh, you know, you should, yeah, well, for sure. you know, there's a lot of people that are are you know. I should plant some milkweed in our backyard. I've been saying that to you oh. that you should. Let's do it because you know the adult butterfly. Uh, monarch butterfly, they need nectar. Mm. But to uh, grow a caterpillar from an egg, you absolutely need milkweed because that's the only thing that they will eat. I will say these one food source animals don't have a great track record of survival. That is true. Unfortunately, the yep. koalas are uh, yep. Yep. not true. doing well either. It's true. <laughs> they, You know what I'm saying? The world is saying, uh-uh, to the to the butter, yeah, butter, butter they're so they're so beautiful. Yeah, they are. They really are. I'm gonna plant some milkweeds. You We're should. We're gonna save this fucking monarch who you, doesn't want to live. We want it to survive more than it does. Uh, you know, what's I, wrong with like you know other plants? Well, and it's other pollinators too. I mean, you know, without the bees, mm. we're not gonna have fruit. Yeah, we need the bees. Well, you know, not just fruit. Bees. So many products that bees pollinate. Right, right, we right. Yeah, we, we're in big trouble there. Yeah, yeah. I sent uh, Dan some pictures. We're going to put those in as you're talking about it, right, Dan? Oh, it's at the top of your dock if you want to just pull it up. And oh, so you want to see my mom's grow up? Yep. Okay. The, oh, it's just one video, Dan? Uh, there's a oh, and there's an only, album right above that. Not only that, but the changing climate. It you says know, Team Skeet. Uh, that's definitely not the album. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not related to the album. So here's my mom's grow operation. This is, it's save the uh, well, first monarchs you have to, over the, at my mom's. The bottom picture, show the bottom picture with the leaf. This is Theodore's room that's been converted, that's the office, been converted into full yes. on. Yes, but show the, see, that white dot, that is an egg. I see. And they're very sticky and you're, you know. There's a this caterpillar. Yes, that's Pretty. milkweed. Nice. And that when the caterpillar is about... Uh, Two weeks old. Wait, wait, wait. They they do that. They they make a little silk uh, spot and they hang themselves into a J. They actually look like a J. 
And then you and have to like buy that those for two weeks. Big and then, cages to protect them from other animals. So not only do you have to get the milkweed, you have to get the cages for They them don't want to live. I'm telling you, these monarchs don't want to live. See, look, there's Teddy. I, I released oh, a butterfly. butterfly? Yeah, oh, he helped me release one of the butterflies. So here, these are See, all your butterflies. They are beautiful. See, now the thing about a butterfly that a lot of people don't know, once they come out of the chrysalis, mm -hmm. which is like their cocoon, they call them chrysalis, mm -hmm. um, their wings are wet mm. and they need to hang and dry and they're so vulnerable. Mm. Wasps will kill them mm. because they can't, they can't fly. They're just totally vulnerable. And so I, um, you know- You're the guardian. I, I try to protect them and I've done, I've had some really good luck. You're very But changing I mean, climate has, is, 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 is hard also on them because it gets so flipping hot. They can't, they can't survive. Here's my mom. In action. Do we oh, have yeah. audio, Dan? Or is there no audio on this? Uh, there was um, a caterpillar that was turning. You know, caterpillars shed their skin four times mm. while they're growing. And at the end, when they turn into a chrysalis, they have to, you know, they shed their skin and they wiggle into the chrysalis and then they stay there for uh, um, a couple of weeks. They live about six weeks and they travel like, 3,000 miles to- The butterflies? Yeah. Holy shit, where do yeah. they go? They, they, they go to, um, like they'll go to Arizona, they go to Mexico. They're the ones from the Midwest. There's 3, two different monarchs. Yeah. What do they do? Are they mating? No, they mate. They yeah, they mate. Lay. No, no, no. They mate before. In Michoacan. Well, then what? Right. Leo, he, they, his cousin owns a uh, hotel down there that- that host people who come just to see millions of butterflies. Did you show the, the, the wiggling? Wait, you, we missed it. That's just, I mean, you know. Did you show the wiggling? We before? saw the wiggling. We've Did seen, you? we've With seen wiggling. Wiggles. Okay. I know what a wiggle looks okay, like. Okay, so I'm releasing it out. So here's the, the big moment. The We've open. got the butterfly. I think it cuts. You don't really get to see me releasing it. I have a milkweed plant that I usually put them on and then they can fly away when they're ready. There's your milkweed. But I, I mean, you I can't keep them. You can't keep plants. They have to be in shade because it's gotten so hot. So the heat kills them, the oh birds kill them, the wasps kill the cold, them. cold. Yep. The air, the smog, the climate. There used to be like 1.2 million monarchs in California. That doesn't seem like a lot. And and now they're down to like a thousand. Yeah, they do a count every a year. Thousand? Like up by like almost two hundred, almost like Santa 2, Barbara. Wait, what? How is there only two thousand? That means you produce fifty. You're you're actually having a meaningful yep. impact on the population. Yeah, but the problem is, really, I no. produce them, but then they repro once they they are are um uh well they ready do it to, they they have to be fertilized. They have mm -hmm. to mate with another you know, butterfly, and then they can lay eggs again. But if you don't have the milkweed for them to eat, mm -hmm. all those bur all those butterflies that you saved, I mean, you have to be prepared when they come back. There's only 2,000, that's crazy. Well, they do an annual count. I yeah. believe it's up by Santa Barbara as they come down the coast. And so much just is watching. <laughs> shocking how, huh. well, they yeah. know what time of year, it's just yeah. shocking and how And then when was there it there was 1.5 million? How long ago? Uh, two decades ago, yeah. roughly. Because I was, remember there seeing There was 1.2 monarch. mm -hmm. million monarchs. I remember seeing monarchs all over the place growing up. This year, 1,914 were spotted. Wow. That's a big decline. That's, okay, let's get those milkweeds out yep. there, people. Yep. Operation Mom. Yep. Operation Mom of yep. the Monarch. All right. I take this very seriously. <laughs> Good. Very rewarding. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. That's families. That's it? Well That's done. It. Oh, okay. That was fast. So we have... Um, Eel is gone this week. This is the last week she's gone. So um, don't panic because we're just taking our time. We're making content. You guys will see. Don't panic. We're making lots of content. <laughs> we're working. But next week, we'll go back to our regular programming with Off the Rails and Families and After Dark. This week's a little different. But stay tuned. Don't panic. We'll be back. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Ciao.